Hello and welcome to my workshop. So today we're going to be doing a little how-to on making a vacuum former. And so as many of you have seen, I've been doing a lot of vacuum forming here lately. And the system I developed was something that I got off the internet and just kind of put piece together, made it work. Uh, I think I'm at the point now I'm ready to do something a little bit, uh, a little bit different, probably a little bit more um, efficient, I guess is the right word. So uh, we're going to get to that today. So here is a uh, shot of my current setup and uh, you can see the top is it has the form uh, that holds the, the plastic and then the base which uh, you hook up to the shop vac which is down below and a uh, patio heater which is uh, in, a, in a kind of a box it's, it's foil lined uh, the box does have hinges which allows it to fold up and the patio and the patio heater is just resting on the floor on um, some wooden platform to raise it up. So that's a very simple process I have, but um, we're trying to look to uh, improve this a little bit. So let's uh, see if we can get to that. So right now I'm just breaking down the uh, plywood pieces I have uh, on my little uh, table saw here. And, you know, I have a car and I have a truck, so I end up having to buy these uh, either two by two or two by four sheets and kind of making do with what I what I can get home in, in the uh, hatch of my car. So here, uh, just taking some uh, glue and a little uh, brad nailer to uh, put these plywood pieces together, and I just start the um, formation of this uh, box here. It really is uh, nice having the uh, brad nailer, and uh, just makes things so much more efficient than trying to like drive a nail by hand or use a uh, even a, a screw gun. So these are just uh, support pieces in the bottom for uh, a future edition of the uh, pop-up casters. So the bottom is just a piece of plywood and that's what the uh, tank will rest on. So I'm just gluing and uh, you know, nailing that down. I really want this uh, to come off pretty easily, so I'm just putting a couple hand holes in. Okay, so what I have here is a uh, box that is about 36 inches tall. Uh, it's roughly 24 inches long, 14 inches wide in that ballpark. I actually goofed up and put the end pieces on the wrong side, but it worked out as fine. Uh, I get not a carpenter here and not even trying to pretend to be so uh doing my best the vacuum pump sits on this shelf and so the you know the idea for now is the uh the vacuum pump will just ride on these feet we'll see how bad it vibrates around and there i put something in there to hold it and then this tray has uh has these finger holes and so that just pulls out and is rests down on these little uh, cleats or, or I put in to hold the shelf up and in the bottom and a little bit hard to see but there's a uh, 11 gallon uh, air tank and so it's basically the same thing you'd have for an air compressor but there's no compressor there uh, and that's just going to sit on the bottom It uh, is pretty snug going in, you know, like I said, I put the pieces on the wrong side and which made it a little bit shorter than it needed to be, but it's, it's actually going to be fine. It holds it in there really nicely. Um, it's just a little bit of dragging coming in and out, but it shouldn't take it out that often. And then the base uh, is just another wooden, you know, plywood base that this, the tank rests on with some two by threes and that's going to help support the, uh, these pop-up casters that will sit on the bottom. So uh, the basic structure is there. I uh, need to do a couple more things and then we'll we'll get on to uh, figuring out the uh, platen and then get into the, the uh, all the piping and stuff. All right, so let's get to that. So here just putting on these pop-up casters and what these do is allow you to uh, push down with your feet 
to uh, you know pop this up and then you know wheel it around and then when you get it to where you want you know pop them down and it just sits flat on the base. So now I'm uh, rebuilding the uh, vacuum table or the the, the uh, platen. So I'm using the uh, form to get a general shape of what I'm looking for to have a, a chamber. And so I want it just a little bit bigger than the uh, than the opening I use for the uh, the form. And so to get the chamber, you you just take three pieces and you sandwich them together. And uh, obviously the center piece you cut out, and that, that's what uh, provides the, the chamber for underneath where the vacuum can be pulled. So I wanted to use a piece of plywood as the uh, base, and, and just because that's a really good structurally sound piece of material, and uh, I thought it would stay nice and flat, but I would then build up off of that with MDF, which is a little bit... Uh, a smoother surface and uh, I thought a little bit better to, to work with. You end up having to get the, you know, some way to get the PVC fitting into the bottom of the box. And my thought was, you know, just to glue this in place. And um, I figured this would hold pretty well, but we'll, you know, time will time will tell. So the original idea was to uh, you know hold this piece of metal down, which I'm going to eventually drill holes through. I wanted a, a piece of metal that had the holes already pre-drilled, but I just couldn't find anything. So I ended up just finding a, a piece of metal that I had, and I'm having to drill the holes in myself. And I'm using a uh, contact cement, and you know if you've never used it before, basically you do, you apply it on both sides pretty liberally, and then you let it dry. And then once both sides are kind of dry, not completely, but you know kind of tacky dry. Um, you press them together and um, then they should stick pretty well. So I was a little bit nervous about having to drill all these holes out. You know, I did it in the previous table and it just seemed to take forever. But I guess because of the, the smaller holes and I don't think I have quite as many of them as I did in the other table, it seemed to go pretty quick. Okay, so I'm pretty close to having the vacuum table finished up and I decided to go ahead and build a new vacuum table. The one I had would probably work, but I wasn't exactly happy with the whole thing. I had holes all the way out to the edge and I really don't need that. Uh, I had spilled water on it before and it started swelling up on one end and the connection I put on the bottom just wasn't great. Another thing is I wanted to try putting this uh, metal down. So what I have is a, I believe it's a 26 gauge or something, and it's thin gauge metal that I uh, glued down to the top of this board and then drilled all these holes in it. And so you'll have a much um, stiffer surface for it to, to uh, the top of the table to work on and smaller holes, which I found out the larger holes I had before, sometimes at the, in the center, especially if the metal the material was a little too thin due to how much I had to get it um, sagging for like a, you know, really draw, deep draw part, it might pop through one of those bigger holes. So I think the smaller holes will 
keep that from happening. So the top I haven't secured yet, but you can see I have you know all the holes countersunk so it should be clear through. And then what makes this unique to be uh, used for a vacuum table is this center chamber here. So you have a plywood bottom and this MDF ring around here. And I've glued and stapled this to the plywood as well as put a bead of caulk around, uh, silicone caulk around the inside just to kind of help seal this thing up the best I can. On the end down here, there's a uh, PVC fitting. And so what I did is I drilled a hole in the plywood, uh, glue, super glued the PVC fitting and just to hold it in place. And then I had a, a pretty decent size uh, gap where I used a hole saw to drill the hole through here. And I filled that entire gap up with a uh, five minute epoxy. So that should seal that in very well, as well as, um, you know, hold it in place good. So what you end up with is now this PVC fitting that's threaded uh, sealed into the bottom of that chamber. I've also added these cleats on here, which will just register on the inside of the hole. And this will make it so that when I, you know, I pop this into place, um, you know, it won't slide off, but then I can easily just remove this and uh, store it away when I'm not using it. So the next thing I need to do is glue this top down. And uh, what I'll make sure to do is put a thin layer of the silicone around the edge before I glue and staple this down. And then, um, then I'll get on to adding in the, the uh, pump and the uh, tank and get all the plumbing done. So getting closer, so uh, let's just continue on. So now's where the plumbing starts to come in and uh, just using uh, PVC fittings uh, where possible and you know sometimes I have to use the uh, the brass fittings to thread into different things and so I'm just trying to get this thing so that it's you know hugging the box as, as good as possible so that you know things don't stick out too much I was looking around trying to find uh, something to clamp this thing in the box. I ended up finding these little copper um, clamps. They're, they're for copper pipe, I think three quarter inch pipe, but they go around this half inch PVC uh, almost perfectly. We're just trying to figure out if, you know, in use that valve's gonna be um, in, in a good spot to, to, what I have to end up doing is when I put the uh, platen down, I have to, you know, manually operate that valve really quickly, and uh, that's what uh, lets the vacuum get seen into the chamber and uh, you'd be able to form. So I just want to make sure that was in a good spot. So here is just a uh, electrical outlet box that I'm screwing into the back, and what I essentially just taken a, a, an extension cord and cut a section off the end, um, and then you know, wired it up to the switch on the inside. And so basically just using this switch to uh, switch an extension cord. Okay, so uh, I pretty much got the vacuum former complete. There's still some bugs I gotta work out of it, but the basic, uh, the basic shape is here. So what we have is this base, which are on the wheels and it's a much narrower base than, than what I had before, which was basically just two sawhorses. It allows me to move it around when I need to get to different places in the shop, as well as I'll be able to take and store this somewhere out of the way when not in use. The top part, the, the vacuum table, is connected with a, a union, and I'll just be able to break that union loose and then store this away as well. Uh, I have in here all the plumbing that's set up and also mounted a little switch and that switch just is hooked up to a, uh, an extension cord that was cut in half that runs to the pump. And so what that does is allows me to turn the, uh, the vacuum pump on and off from outside without just having to you know, physically unplug the cord every time. So I'm, what I'm doing, I'm getting a good vacuum and it's staying really well up until this valve here. So what we have is, is the, the vacuum pump comes from this line here it has this T with a vacuum gauge that goes down to this 90 this 90 and this T here 
and this goes off to the table and then through this open valve to the bottom goes off to the 11 gallon tank. So what you do is you have this valve closed and this valve open. You turn on the pump and that pulls a vacuum through this line here and, and the tank up until this valve. Once you have the vacuum pulled to where you're looking to get, um, what you'll do is you'll get, the, you'll get that and you'll open this valve up and it'll allow this line which is connected to this table and this chamber underneath all these tiny holes it'll allow that to see vacuum now when you have your hot plastic on top of it it'll pull that hot plastic down and quickly cover all these holes except for where the the vacuum form is and then that'll in turn start to draw that plastic down on that vacuum form and and gives us a really tight form around whatever you're uh, vacuum forming so like I said right now I'm getting good um, vacuum up into this valve here and so as you can see the whole time I've been sitting here this really hasn't moved any the problem is when I open this valve up there's leaks in this table somewhere I've heard that the vacuum will actually pull directly through this MDF so maybe I need to seal the entire top I, I don't know um but that's going to be the the testing that i'm going to have to go through to get that uh to get that worked out right now i just have masking tape over these holes to uh simulate the plastic so this is should just be blocked off i did seal around the edge of this metal so theoretically this and the chamber and everything should be sealed up so that the leak has to be somewhere between this valve and up to this point. So process the process of elimination, I'll slowly work out where I need to go with this. But that, uh, that'll just take a little bit of time and tuning. And then we'll have a really good uh, table to do a lot of uh, interesting vacuum pulls. Still uh, a, lot of, a lot of fun stuff um, coming up. A lot of good interesting projects. Until then, we'll see you on the rocks.